Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the saturation pressure calculation, um, but without knowing whether it's a bubble point or dew point. And let's just kind of take a look at a uh, situation we're looking at now, which is at a temperature where we have a bubble point. Now, up here might be the convergence pressure, for example. And we've got the phase diagram shown here with bubble points and dew points. And if we take a look at how the function H, um, and I'll, I'll draw it in green, the bubble point function H um, and H for the dew point. Um, and this will be, um, I think, being positive and negative zero. And we can just go to the Excel sheet and kind of look around uh, the solution here at 182. We've got the, uh, the bubble point. But if we change that to 200, for example, then you see that the, the, the H bubble point gets larger than zero. Um, the dew point is, is still negative. Um, and as we keep going to 50, it gets bigger, uh, 280, uh, starts getting smaller again, 300, getting smaller. And actually, as you approach 326, you see it goes back to zero. And if we put 326 here, you'll see it goes to zero. And that's because all the K values are one. If all the K values are one, that's a trivial solution, okay? The sum of zi is always one. So the sum of zi times ki will always be one, right? So it's called a trivial solution. It's like, it could be a physical solution, but it's usually not. And um, mathematically, you'll always try to, it'll draw you to that trivial solution because it's always easy to get there. So you have to be careful if you just try to automatically go looking for the for the uh, saturation pressure, it might take you there. And uh, I'll show you that by, by, by let's say, well, anyway, that, it, that's the point, is that this function here, if we look at H of B, uh, bubble point, this green function, let's now go below the, the pressure here. Let us see, that was 326. So below it was getting, let's see, it was positive. And we went to the 180. We got negative 150, negative 100, negative. Just keeps getting more. Seems to be getting more and more negative. So the way this this green function looks, this being the solution here for uh, zero. Okay. So it went positive if we went to a higher pressure, right? And it went negative, and it went actually very negative as we went down this way. But if we went to a high enough pressure up to, the, up to this convergence pressure, then it went and turned back around and came back to zero again. Okay? So that's this function, H bubble point. And uh, this was the solution we were looking for. Um, pressure's too low, it's negative. Pressure's too high, it might go either direction. Uh, this, is, this is a trivial solution. At the pressure bubble point equal to convergence pressure. That will always satisfy that equation. If we look at the how the dew point function behaves along that same temperature here as we change the pressure at this temperature, let's just go back and take a look at how this second term looks, 
Okay, so we can start up around the convergence pressure, 3, 320. Well, it's close to zero as it should be. Because at 326, it will also be zero. Okay? So the, the starting point for the function here is the same. But as we go down in pressure, it gets negative, more negative, more negative, more negative, oops. That's odd. Uh, something in the equation is, oh, it's the, uh, it's the fact that um, the, uh, I think this, I think this A1 is subtracting off one, this here. So what, this, um, to, to make, to allow this to go to very low pressures, um, um, I'm going to, well, I don't know if we're recording or not. Did I start it again? I guess I did. Um, you can go to very low pressures by writing a number like 1.01. Three, four, nine, nine. You, you have to have a, a, a positive gauge pressure, so it's kind of how oh, that didn't even work. The, the the point is that if this this thing has to be greater than than one point oh one three five, so I put put the wrong one one point oh one three five. This has to be greater than that, so it should be like that. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, I'm going to operate on a. Uh, I'm going to take away this one. I'm going, to, I'm going to basically use gauge pressure. I'm going to take this away and just operate with gauge pressure, so I don't subtract off that. Because I, I have to get to a number like ten to the minus sixth bar to find the lower dew point, and it's going to be complicated doing that. So I'm just going to make this easier for myself and. And let this go down. So now I can go to a low number. Uh, See so what was it? 15 was. We're, we're trying to get this number here to go to zero. And uh, we've taken 15. We can go to five, and go to one, and go to the 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001. And there we we flipped it. Okay. So it's down there. I have to make this different format. Okay. And uh, I'll give this the same format here. So the point is that this... Um, at some very low pressure, it, it went back from being negative to now being positive. So somewhere at a very low pressure it will drive this to zero and you get a dew point. So the function looks something like this, um, this dew point function along here. It basically becomes very negative and then finally it will turn back around at very very low pressures and go like that. Okay. The shape probably doesn't look like that, but it'll. <clears throat> okay. So that's that's for this temperature here. That's how those curves look. Now let's let's go from let's go to some higher temperature where we get actually we have a an upper dew point and a lower dew point. I'm not sure where that that will be, but um, want to look at and see what the function does when we when we get that condition. 
So I guess we can go to like 300 and see what happens. Um, I'm not sure whether we'll find uh, a bubble point or a dew point. Um, so we can just we can just try to find something that drives one of these two to zero. 210, 220, 250. Which one seems to be changing? 280, 300, 310. Ah, so the, the second one, the dew point, seemed to flip around there. So we can use this goal seek and maybe try to to get this dew point to go to zero by changing this one here. And lo and behold we've got 307 bar giving us a, a dew point. So it sums the oil composition sum to 100. The K values are pretty close to 1 but they're not exactly equal to 1. And uh, so We've crossed the critical temperature. We're now over on this on this side here. So, so now we can see how the, the, the dew point and bubble point see the bubble point's always negative. If we go a little bit lower, then we get a negative. If we go higher, then it's positive. So this um, this red line is now, it's converging up here at uh, zero, at about 309 bar, and then it becomes, what was it, negative? No, it became positive at lower pressures, and we can just keep going down, 250, uh, I, I think I'd 290. Yeah, it was 308. And then we went down, it gets negative. Negative. Stays negative. 50, 1, and then it went positive again. So 10. So somewhere in there, <clears throat> around five bar, it's going through uh, zero again. So it's it's going like this, and then it crosses zero out there, somewhere. And the the I think the bubble point was was pretty much always negative, right? So the bubble point was you can go up to hundred. 200, 300. So it's, it seems to always be negative on this one here. And I'm just going to make this dashed because it's a, this is the higher temperature. And I'll do the green. This seems to be always negative. Um, starting at the um, convergence pressure, so it just stays negative. Something like that. So, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yeah. Shouldn't the dashed red line be on the negative side? Well, <clears throat> let's see here. Um, was it negative all the time? 200. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It should have been negative. So. So it had the same kind of shape. So it it. Um, Something like that. And then if you look at enough detail, it'll actually have a little hook there as well. 
um, being positive between the 309 dew point and the convergence pressure. So it, it looks kind of a it looks kind of messy. You don't know when to use when which equation to to solve. <clears throat> but it ends up that what you can do is that you can you can you can define a function H S P, which is just saturation pressure, as H bubble point at the particular pressure you're looking for times H dew point. Okay? And then you solve this for zero. And then so once found, this P, I call it S, that we're looking for, you can see if it was the bubble point or the dew point that, that drove the function HSP to zero. So you, it'll tell you after you've done the calculation, was it the bubble point function or the dew point function that actually drove it to zero? Because what you'll find is that both functions are continuous with pressure. You know, the one's far, far away from zero. The other one is going to be going to zero. So no matter what the value of the other function, if one goes to zero, the whole thing goes to zero. So this is just a kind of a a generic way to to solve this saturation pressure calculation not knowing which side you're on and it's and it's easy to to put into are there any questions about this you you basically have two two functions you know one of them is going to go to zero and you just don't know which one so you just multiply the two together so let's do that in our spreadsheet we'll just say h Saturation pressure equals H bubble point times H dew point. Just the product of those two. Okay? I'll put that. Really, these are not that important at all. Still give them some color. So this is the one that we actually want to drive to zero. And... So, for example, we don't know at, let's pick a new temperature, 200 C. We don't know if it's a bubble point or dew point, do we? And uh, so we can just start at uh, the, we can start at the convergence pressure, 326. We know everything's going to go to zero there. Should 320, 300. 90, 50, okay, so somewhere in there, 240. So somewhere in there it's, it's driving it to zero. And you may not be able to see which one's going first. But let's just use the search, let's go seek, driving this value to zero by changing the pressure. Okay. And now you see that it, it's the one that's closest to zero. Of course, this is because of machine accuracy, how many digits, um, that we're only getting it to 10 to the minus 3. And basically, it's saying that it's the bubble point going to zero. You should say that, see that these are summing to 100. You can see that these are not summing to 100. So we're finding a bubble point um, uh, is... is so it's, it's found a bubble point. It, so it finds essentially zero here, and this is the function that it's... So that's a bubble point. If we go to two, 280, we can solve it again. Now, the goal seek is kind of a... I don't know, it's kind of a not very fun thing to use because you have to keep setting it up every time. You go in, you set goal seek, you have to find which one to drive to zero, that one. You have to say that, and you have to say that and so forth. 
can find that it's, oh, now it's kind of hard to see <laughs> which one's closest. Okay, they're both pretty close. So this is actually getting close to the critical point. You can see that from the K values as well. Um, we need a little more, uh, we need a little tighter convergence. Okay, so I'm going to go back to using this solver, which is what I tried to show you last time. And, and the solver gives you a little more um, capability in solving these iterative problems. So the way the solver works um, is that you have to say that you want to uh, minimize or drive a value to, in this case, zero. Now, it, it will remember this. Um, and you tell it by changing what, and it'll remember that. We're going to change the pressure. And we're going to try to, that's the cell we want to drive to zero. So set the target cell, that's the cell you want to drive to zero or minimize or maximize or, or drive to some other value. We want to go to zero. Um, and you do that by changing, and here you can have not just one value change, you can have multiple things you can change. We're just going to change the pressure. And then you have some other things you can change, and then you can also constrain. Um, the, in other words, you don't let it change the pressure beyond the pressures higher than the convergence pressure, for example because that would be a, an invalid solution. So I can say that as a constraint, I want to add the constraint that, that this pressure be less than or equal to the convergence pressure. So it'll never go higher than that. Okay. And if I only want the upper saturation pressures, I can say I, I never want the pressure to go lower than, I don't know, 20 bar or something. If, if I wanted to, I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to do that, but... I could add another constraint that this pressure can't, it has to be greater than or equal to, you know, 20 bar. So I won't pick up that lower saturation pressure. So you can put in as many of these constraints as you like on, on how you change the variables. So now we can solve this. And it went to 318. Um, And though they're, they're both, you see, now they're, you're basically at a critical point. You've got all the K values very, very close to, to one. Um, so the critical temperature of this system is around 280. And we can go back down to our reservoir temperature, which was what? Um, 70 something? Around 70. So we can uh, solve again. Now we just go back into solver, and you see that it remembers what the target cell was. It remembers what you're trying to change, and it remembers the constraints. So you don't have to reset the problem every time. Now we solve it again, found a solution, and you can see that um, that the solution it found basically is the convergence pressure. See, it's always going to try to, to take you to the trivial solution. So to, to make it not pick that, you're going to have to pick a, a, a starting pressure that's maybe lower. Okay? You're going to have to work your way up, now, whether it, it makes it there or not. So we're starting, we're starting at 200 now. <clears throat> and... On this function here, we're kind of starting with this value and this value, and we're trying to get here. And you see it found the 182, because it started from below. And it's kind of like a black hole. You know, the convergence pressure is like a black hole. If it can take you there, it will, because it's, it's like the easiest. So you have to start far enough away from it in order to find and the convergence to, in this case, the solution we really want. <clears throat> so it found the, the 182. Um, we can change it back to the 300 C we had. Again, because the solver remembers all the settings. 
it finds the 307. It shows you that it's the dew point. It's driving to zero. Um, let's see, at 307 bar. Okay, so this is this is the kind of solution that you'll want to use in in solving this exercise, where you're gonna you're gonna map the saturation pressure table. Um, the way it's set up now, we can't find the lower dew points, right? Because of what? Why can't we find lower dew points now? Yeah, when I went up to the solver here, I put this constraint that the pressure we're looking for can't be less than 20 bar. But if I remove that, okay, now, if I solve it again, it's going to fi it's finding that one because it starts where the value is. But if I start at a low pressure, like one bar, if I kind of start looking around down there, then hopefully it'll find. The 5.3 bar. Right. Driving a dew point. If we go to this back to the 70 degree C. Try to find the, dew, the lower dew point there. Solver, everything's remembered, everything's set up. Um, it found the upper saturation pressure. So it depends the, how, these, how these curves look, whether when it takes the derivative in the newton raphson method, whether it's gonna search upward or downwards, okay? So in order to get the lower dew point, you may have to start at a at a very low pressure, 1, 10 to the minus 10, for example. You get some pretty funky K values there, but and we can try to solve it. And it found it. We just don't have enough digits here. Remember it was around 0.001. Found the dew point here. So now it's, it's kind of a, a generic saturation pressure calculator. Um, you can give it the temperature. It'll find, hopefully, a saturation pressure. It might find the trivial solution. It might find the upper, and it might find the lower. So you might have to handhold it a little bit to get where you want to go. <clears throat> okay. I'll, go, I'll bring it back to the original by giving it a higher initial guess and then solving. We're back to this where we should be. Okay, so that's the saturation pressure calculation. You've got basically a function h that you can drive to zero. You, you do have some some things to consider, multiple solutions and, and so forth, um, trivial solution. Any questions about the saturation pressure calculation? Yeah. Um, is there a way that we uh, set some temperatures and we find all the you know upper or lower dew points for that, and then we uh, automatically you know, draw the curve for that, like like these you, software calculators? Well, you know, but this is Excel and this is a single point calculation, so. If you work long enough with Excel, you can probably figure out a way to do it. So there should be a macro or something? You, there should be. You can make a macro. You can make a Visual Basic program. You can do whatever you like. But the, the, the purpose of this is, uh, is not to find all of the points and all of the function, but to find at least one bubble point, one dew point, and try to locate the critical point, which we've kind of done now. And if you want to, it's optional. You can find some lower dew points. Uh, you draw the figure. Um, you only need a few points to do that because the function is a very well-behaved function. So for this problem, you don't need all of that. And um, so I don't think anybody's done it. I'm not sure that it's worth doing, but you, you, could, you could always do it if you know Visual Basic, something like that, within Excel. 
Okay, so that was what we didn't cover. We did cover the multi-stage separator flash calculation. I'm not going to redo that uh, today. That was already covered in the material. So, um, what what will have to be done? Of course, I don't have to do the exercise, so I'm not going to do it. Is that what would be natural to do is to take and link, uh, you know, these properties here back to this setup sheet, and and make use of a consistent. So, okay, so I think that'll, any questions before we leave the flash calculations, the um, equilibrium calculations, okay. So then what we'll do is that we'll continue on with talking about the black oil PVT. formulation. This is, um, we, we did talk quite a bit about it on, fr on Friday. Um, this is in chapter 7. And I'll just give you a short review of what we talked about on Friday before we bring some new things in in the last hour. Um, we have four, four properties. Um, we have for the let's start for the we have for the gas phase we have little R S and B G D which discussed for the difference between B G and B B G D. Um, this is the solution oil gas ratio. And it represents, for practical purposes, the molar composition of the gas phase, YI. And in some ways, you can say that the BG, the gas formation volume factor, represents a form of the gas density, if you will. It's not exactly that, but similar to that. They're definitely related. For the oil phase, there are two properties. The solution gas oil ratio. And this is basically representing the composition of the oil. We even talked about how to transform it from uh, GOR to molar composition. And this is the very important oil formation volume factor. And it is related also to the to the oil density. Uh, in a way, it's more than that. But um, The BG represents how the gas expands as it comes to the surface. The BO represents how the oil shrinks as it goes to the surface. So it's basically a, related to a kind of a shrinkage. The, the black oil PVT properties are specific to a particular surface process. Whereby we are taking reservoir fluids or fluids uh, pressure and temperature, some mixture, um, at some pressure and temperature, some phase, we're taking it through some multi-stage process, um, which I just will abbreviate with that. And out of that process comes a surface gas product and a surface oil product that we can sell. And that particular process, if it's 
a single stage flash that's very inefficient because you get too many of the uh, too many components the heavier components move into the gas phase and are sold at a very cheap price okay but if you design the multi the number of stages and the pressures and temperatures then you can extract to a maximum the components that form and remain in the liquid where we can get the highest price okay so and depending on this process that you use you will get different values for these four Blackwell PVT properties so these depend in some cases strongly so there may be a strong dependence of the black oil PVT on the particular process that's used. Now that's usually for mixtures that have gas oil ratios greater than about 
probably want to open the door and 